It's very unfortunate what happened, but uh, at least we hope that this will be uh, an alarming uh, event calling for the international community to wake up and, and realize how serious this threat is. So we hope that this will be a game changer. We hope that there will be some more engagements and some more commitments by the international community to feel that they have to face this challenge and eradicate ISIS uh, anywhere that they operate uh, to make sure that uh, such uh, terrorist activities would not be repeated. So do you see attacks like the one in Paris as a sign of weakness on the part of IS? Uh, on the ground, we feel that they are weaker than they used to be, but that uh, by no means an indication that ISIS has significantly weakened. Uh, they might uh, be losing some grounds here and there, but uh, to them, to terrorize, of course, they are using different methods, and I think this is a, probably a change of the tactics and uh, they might try to do more of this if they are not stopped and if they are not uh, kept under pressure. So what, in your opinion, would it take to uh, defeat ISIS, not just to contain them and keep them under pressure, to actually beat them? It's very important to militarily defeat them because once they lose territory, that means uh, no areas for the uh, jihadis from all over the world to come to, so they will probably lose their attraction sites, uh, and they will lose uh, their capability to recruit locals. They will lose their capability to raise funds. So military uh, defeat of ISIS is the beginning of the total defeat of ISIS, but that by no means is the end of them. To do this, we also believe that there has to be an international community's uh, real engagement to cut off uh, uh, their uh, movement to dry out their financial resources wherever they may be. And more importantly, it's mostly for the Islamic countries to uh, fight ISIS with uh, a more moderate version of Islam's ideology. If uh, the international community is not ready to send troops uh, and to uh, on the ground engage with ISIS, then they have to provide sufficient support to the forces that have effectively been fighting ISIS. And I mean the Peshmergas. The Peshmergas have been the most effective force that have defeated ISIS, that have pushed ISIS out. Now, you, of course, as Kurds, you're pushing forward, but you're pushing into territory you regard as your own. Um, and there's a limit to how much further you can go because you don't want to go into, say, Arab or Sunni areas. That puts quite a limitation on it, doesn't it? We do have these geopolitical limitations. We cannot go beyond certain areas where we don't believe it's a part of Kurdistan. Uh, but in order to fight ISIS in those areas, we, we all have to come to some sort of agreements and we have to have a coalition force. In this case, we do need Arab forces capable of fighting. And also those forces have to be carefully selected, that, which do not uh, create any sensitivity with the local populations. When you say Arab, you mean outside Arab countries. Do you think they should inv get involved? Uh, not necessarily. If Iraqi forces are capable of fighting ISIS and drive ISIS out of these territories. Are they? Uh, so far, we haven't seen. I mean, we've seen some uh, progress, but uh, so far it hasn't been a very decisive force to completely defeat ISIS. Now, if the West and the outside powers do what you think they should do, how long do you think it would take to defeat IS completely? Uh, I think if the international community is willing to fully engage and militarily defeat ISIS, it should not take uh, more than months or perhaps even weeks.